Hello and welcome to another episode about space. When it comes to distances in space, quite often we are not able to fully understand and perceive just how vast the universe is. For this reason, astronomers are using some specific terms and methods in order to determine and express those distances between astronomical objects. One of the most common metric terms, used by astronomers, that you might have come across is the astronomical unit, or abbreviated as AU. The astronomical unit, refers to the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is about 149,597,871 kilometers. The light year. This is probably the most common astronomical term that everyone wants to know about. The light is the fastest thing we know, what we call a light year is simply the distance that light can travel through the vacuum of space, within the span of one Earth year which is just about under 10 trillion kilometers. Or in other words, just under 300,000 kilometers per second. Another way of putting the speed of light into perspective is by thinking that it took the Apollo astronauts four days to reach the moon. However, at the speed of light, the moon is just one second away. There are two major techniques that astronomers use to estimate the distance of any given star. The first technique involves triangulation also known as parallax. The Earth orbits the Sun, and as this happens, it forms an orbital diameter of 299,337,984 kilometers. Or in simple terms, two astronomical units. So by observing a specific star one day, say in January, and then by observing the same star six months later, in June, Astronomers can see a difference in the viewing angle of the star. This apparent shift of position, against a background of other objects, and the use of trigonometry, enables astronomers to measure the distance of the star in question. The parallax technique only works for stars that are no more than 400 light years away from Earth. There is no direct method currently that allows us to measure stars exceeding this value. To determine the distance of those more remote stars, Astronomers use luminosity, or in simple terms, brightness. This method is known as standard candles. This term is referring to objects whose luminosity is known to us. Here is an example. If you know how bright one of those sky lanterns is, then, as it flies away in the sky, you know that the amount of light you receive from the lantern will decrease by the distance, squared. And so, by comparing the amount of light you receive, to the initial known brightness amount of the lantern, you can then tell what its actual distance is. Adapting this example to the actual astronomical observations, the lantern then becomes a special type of star called, Sophiid variable. The main characteristic of these stars, is that they are internally unstable. And therefore, as they radially pulsate, with changes in both diameter and temperature, they produce differences in brightness with a well-defined stable period and amplitude. In other words, the expansion and contraction causes their brightness to vary, which allows us to calculate their luminosity by measuring the period of this cycle, with more luminous stars changing more slowly. Therefore, if we compare the light we observe from these stars to the intrinsic brightness we have calculated this way, we can tell how far away they are. However, even by using this method, we can only observe individual stars up to about 40 million light years away. Because stars that are located beyond that point, become too blurry for us to resolve. Luckily, there is another type of star we can use in order to calculate the distance of more remote astronomical objects. The Type 1 Supernovae The Type 1A supernova is one of the ways that stars die. Essentially, they are a gigantic stellar explosion, and they are so bright that can actually outshine the galaxies where they occur. With that in mind, although we are not able to see individual stars within those remote galaxies, we can still observe a supernova explosion when it happens. And so, Type 1A supernovae can be therefore used as standard candles. By understanding the relationship in a supernova's brightness and decline rate, we are able to use these supernovae to probe distances up to several billions of light years away. The parsec. The parsec is a unit of distance, 
It is the distance between our Sun and some other astronomical object which has one second degree difference in parallax angle. To comprehend what that parallax angle is, let's apply it to the parallax method we previously discussed. As you can see, one parsec measures the distance from our Sun to the star, which has one second degree difference, or one arc second. Practically, that angle is determined by observing a specific star and compare it to the Sun, then we repeat the same observation, but from another point in Earth's orbit. One parsec is equal to 3.26 light years, and with that in mind, the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri, is just 1.2 parsecs away. We have now gone through some of the basic terms and practices used by astronomers. But why is it so important to us, to be able to see and observe that far away in space? Well, let's consider some facts. When we look at the Sun, we are actually seeing an image of it as it was 8 minutes ago. As this is the amount of time required for the light emitted to reach the Earth. Looking at a familiar group of stars in the night sky, we can spot the Big and the Small Dipper. At the end of Small Dipper's tail, you can find Polaris. Tonight, when this yellow-white supergiant's light reached the Earth it would have taken it 323 years to do so. Think of it as just a direct broadcast, live from the 17th century, around the time when the Salem Witch Trials were taking place. And of course, when it comes to galaxies, it has taken millions of light years, in order for their light to reach our planet. When their light began its cosmic journey, the Earth looked a bit different than today. And so, with all that in mind, the further we can look back, the younger the universe we are probing. If we manage to develop the necessary technology to look that far in the past, and decode all the information the universe is giving us, we might be able to answer one of humanity's greatest mysteries. How did it all begin? And where we come from? Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. Feel free to leave your feedback, subscribe and share this video. Until next time, goodbye.